Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a comedy and horror film called Untitled Horror Movie. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The actors, Chrissy, Alex and Max are currently filming a found footage horror movie written by their fellow actor colleague and friend Kip as a favor. While Chrissy and Max take the role seriously, Alex breaks character to complain about the stupid script. The actors all work together in a TV show called Bell. However, one of their co-stars, Declan, gets a call from his agent Mark. Upset and frustrated that Declan is being disrespectful by peeing while on the call, Mark gets straight to the bad news. Not only does he fire Declan from their agency, but he also mentions that their TV show is getting cancelled. Meanwhile, Chrissy, Alex, and Kip are on their own call talking about Kip's home movie. There, Kip tells Alex to take the filming seriously, showing them the footage of Alex's complaint. At that moment, Max joins the call, followed by Kelly, a known diva actress who has the lead role in their TV show. Then, Declan joins, more than a little bit late, which angers Kelly. Nonetheless, the cast is complete, so they start talking about wanting to get a pay raise for their work. But Declan tells him that the show is cancelled, which puts the group in disarray. Still, Max tries to be positive, pointing out how they can just start auditioning again for other shows. Despite the forced optimism, Alex tells him that the studio still has them under contract even if the show gets cancelled, so they can't audition anywhere else yet. Understandably enough, the entire cast is upset because they'd be losing their source of income. As an alternative, Kip suggests pushing through with his home movie, hoping it'll be good enough for a network to buy it. Kip explains that his movie premise is about a spirit that attacks people who sin. So, the actors all agree to try it out, even if they think it sounds cheesy. Hence, Chrissy makes them all a Dropbox, an app that can automatically upload all the videos they'll film to the shared folder. Right away, the cast starts filming their own found footage style scenes. Max and Chrissy take it seriously as usual, while Declan, Alex, and Kelly have some complaints about the script, thinking that it's still stupid. Nonetheless, they still deliver proper footage that Kip can use. On their next call, they all tell Kip that they think the script is lacking and feels dull. So, they all cooperate to add new aspects to the story. With this, Chrissy starts consulting her pendulum for ideas. Of course, this takes the attention of her peers, asking what she's even doing. While Max, Alex, and Declan are dubious of what it does, Kelly just warns her not to play around with things like that telling her that it's a conduit, and they never know what kind of spirit would be called upon their questions. With that conversation, Kip and Alex suddenly come across an idea for their script, noting how they can add a scene where they use a pendulum to call upon another spirit that'll help them banish the other spirit that's attacking them. So Declan sends them a banishment curse that he found on Reddit, and Chrissy volunteers to read it whilst holding her pendulum. Immediately after reading it, Chrissy's video glitched, but no one thought it was weird, thinking it's just a cool effect. After the group call, Kelly talks to Kip in private, demanding for him to write better scenes for her. Afterward, everyone starts filming their own scenes reciting the banishment curse. Everyone does what they could with the script. Meanwhile, Max has his acting coach on call, Leslie Kahn, while he's filming. However, Chrissy, Alex, and Kelly notice loud banging sounds after chanting the curse. When Chrissy does a dramatic fall, a shadow moves behind her. On the other hand, Declan just falls asleep even while filming. The next day, everyone talks about the new scenes again, and Kip compliments everyone for the great work. Suddenly, Max speaks up and tells him some good news. Apparently, he sent a bit of the footage to his manager who has a connection with someone from Lionsgate. Turns out, the studio is interested in their in-progress work and wants to offer an amount to buy it. Despite the amazing news, the group gets thrown into distress because of the newly added pressure. But when they finally get their bearings back, they decide not to sell it right away, and instead aim to make it better to get other offers. So, with the newfound determination to produce higher quality footage, Kelly asks Chrissy about the shadow in her room. Kelly thinks that Chrissy did it to be extra. However, the latter has no idea what Kelly is talking about, not aware of whatever shadow it was, but the group isn't buying it thinking that Chrissy is just playing dumb to keep her secrets. When the group disconnects one by one, Kelly stays behind with Kip so she could complain about Chrissy, saying that she was being selfish. But Kip stands in Chrissy's defense, telling Kelly that maybe their colleague was being truthful. Still, Kelly doesn't buy it. Later on, the group starts filming the new scenes for their movie, noticeably stepping up their acting game. But weird things start happening to the group again. Chrissy starts slapping herself, Declan notices sudden lightning even without rain, then a shadow also walks across Alex's room. 
The next day, Declan asks them if anyone else saw the lightning, but they all say no. Then, the group notices that Chrissy is late, so they start arguing about it. Declan mentions that the movie can continue without Chrissy, because she isn't adding much to the movie. But soon enough, Chrissy joins the call, looking troubled, with a noticeable bruise near her eye. Immediately, Chrissy starts crying, scared that something strange is afoot. But everyone else convinces her that she probably just got carried away with her acting that she got performance amnesia. However, after the meeting, Kelly, Kip, and Alex stay to talk about what just happened. Suddenly, Declan rejoins, knowing that they're having a secret meeting. Right away, he concludes that something strange is going on. So, Kelly says that she felt a gush of wind wash over her, despite not being near any windows. Because of this, Kelly finally realizes that Chrissy's shadow trick probably wasn't fake. However, Kip just thinks she's being crazy, pointing out that Alex did the exact same trick. This makes Alex confused, saying that she didn't do anything, hence concluding that was probably just her ceiling fan. Later that night, Kip calls Alex, telling her that she's worried about Chrissy because she uploaded a strange video. So, he shows her the footage uploaded from Chrissy's device of someone else holding the camera, filming her as she sleeps. But Alex is still dubious, thinking that it's just Max helping her film better footage. But Kip is insistent that something's wrong. So, they call the entire group to check on her. When Chrissy joins the call, Max immediately asks her if she's alone. So she says that she is. Confused, Kip shows the entire group the video of someone filming through Chrissy's house then showing her sleeping. But still, Alex thinks that it's just Chrissy or Max. But everyone else starts panicking, thinking that Chrissy is in danger. So Max tells her to call 911. But just as she does, her video call gets dropped. Worried, Declan calls her on his phone. Thankfully, she answers right away, saying that her computer just died. Suddenly, Chrissy hears a loud bang in her room, so she goes to check it out, even bringing a prop samurai sword for defense. On the other hand, Declan shows their video call to the others. More strange noises could be heard from Chrissy's house, so everyone else tells her to just run. But instead, Chrissy goes to the kitchen to grab a knife and investigate. Suddenly, Alex gets dropped from the call, but nobody notices. When Chrissy doesn't see anyone inside her house, she just starts laughing, thinking that she's just being paranoid. She even starts suspecting that the group is just playing a prank on her. A few moments later, someone starts banging on Chrissy's door, so she thinks that it's probably just the cops knocking. Right away, Chrissy puts her phone down so she could answer it. Suddenly, they see Chrissy being thrown across the room. Furthermore, she starts choking herself to death in front of everyone. As Chrissy dies, the last thing they see is her removing her pendulum necklace. Afterward, Declan finally realizes that Alex is missing, so he starts panicking. But Alex finally comes back to the call, saying that her power just died. Declan immediately tells her that Chrissy is dead, but Kip tells everyone that she's fine. Apparently, Chrissy called the police three minutes after her original call to cancel. However, Declan points out that they were still on the call by that time. Even Max is convinced that Chrissy is already dead, so Declan decides to drive to Chrissy's house to see it for himself. On the other hand, Kelly is also convinced that something is haunting them, all because of Chrissy's pendulum. When the group call finishes, Kip gets a call from Chrissy, but she can't be seen in the video. Furthermore, Kip gets a call from Kelly, who's still trying to convince him that everything happening is real and scary. So as a rebuttal, Kip merges the call from Chrissy so that Kelly can see that she called. Suddenly, the camera moves but still doesn't show Chrissy. Then, they hear loud banging from her door once more. There, they see Declan behind the glass door, but noticeably acting strange. The phone gets put down, showing an angle of both Chrissy and Declan. All of a sudden, Declan raises his hand, which makes Chrissy start strangling herself again. As she gets thrown back once more, the camera moves and shows another angle of Chrissy dying again, before the call drops. Right away, Kelly calls Declan to tell him about what happened, but Declan proves to them that he's still driving on the way there and is nowhere near Chrissy's house. When Declan gets to Chrissy's place, everyone hops back on the group call. When Declan starts opening the door, he immediately finds Chrissy's dead body, so he backs away, not wanting to go inside. However, Alex still doesn't believe that she's actually dead, so Declan starts banging on the door to test her, but he starts panicking when Chrissy didn't even flinch. Hence, everyone else starts being convinced that Chrissy is indeed dead, so Declan starts leaving, but Kelly won't let him. Instead, she forces him to take the pendulum so they can try and put an end to this. Despite the hesitation, Declan takes it, but when he's about to leave again, he hears someone screaming inside the house. Because of this, Declan goes back to see whoever it was. He points out a shadow past Chrissy's body. Suddenly, a loud banging could be heard, scaring Declan. 
When he turns back, he sees Chrissy staring back at him creepily. Without reluctance, Declan just starts running away. When Declan gets back home, Max gets a call from his manager. He shares the good news with everyone, saying that Netflix wants to buy their film. The mood suddenly shifts, with everyone now focused on their movie. While they keep asking Max questions, nobody notices that an invisible force knocks Declan down. Because of this, Declan gets everyone's attention. But before he could explain, he gets thrown again. Kip thinks he's just attention seeking, but it happens again. So Kelly asks him about the pendulum, which he's wearing. Immediately, he takes it off. Suddenly, Kelly drops her phone, and the group sees a shadow crawling across her ceiling. She starts hyperventilating, but Kip thinks that everyone is just in on some joke. All of a sudden, Max realizes that the banishment curse could be the reason, and not just the pendulum. So Declan pulls up the Reddit forum he found it from. Suddenly, an invisible force starts hitting Alex. Terrified, Declan starts looking for a way to undo the curse. There, he finds that they can only let it run its course. Kelly tells him that the spirit needs to fulfill its objective before it could leave. She points out that it's probably attacking the bad parts within them. However, Kelly points out that they can probably pass it to someone eviler. Meanwhile, Max starts getting thrown around his room again. With an idea, Declan drops from the call to follow Kelly's suggestion. The next day, Kip calls Declan, who's on his way to send the package of the pendulum to someone else. But he won't say who he's sending it to. Furthermore, Kip tells him that the authorities found Chrissy's body, confirming her death. So Kip is feeling remorseful, wishing that he could have just believed them from the start. So Declan tells him to just forget it and drops the call. Soon, the group gets an email from their network about their former TV show. So, Alex and Kip are worried that it's actually getting cancelled. When Max joins their call, he's noticeably distressed and panicky, saying that he's starting to lose his mind and even move back to his mom's house. So Kip reassures him that it'll be over soon, because Declan already sent the package to someone else. However, that night, the group doesn't realize that they're being filmed. But when Declan does, he starts strangling himself, the same way Chrissy does. On the day of the meeting, everyone starts worrying about their TV show, but Max is more concerned about Chrissy's death. Meanwhile, Declan still hasn't joined the call, so the group starts getting worried. Even when Kip calls him, he doesn't answer. They go back to talking about the state of their show. Then, Alex tells them not to give their network a reason to keep them under contract so they could finish their movie. This surprises Kip, saying that Chrissy is already dead, but Alex and Kelly say that they should push through. Their argument gets cut short when their colleagues join the call, consisting of Bobby Brown, the head of their network, and her assistant Harry, alongside Michelle, someone from the marketing team. They sympathize with their grief with Chrissy, but they go straight to the point. Turns out, because of Chrissy's death, their show became popular, so they got renewed for three more seasons. Despite the questionable ethics of capitalizing on Chrissy's death, the group is happy for their gains. Suddenly, Bobby gets a call, so she mutes the call, but forgot to mute herself. While talking to someone on the phone, she starts opening a package she received from Declan. As everyone panics, realizing what Declan did, he joins the video call, acting visibly strange. Bobby holds the pendulum and reads out the banishment curse because she couldn't hear the group's warning. Afterward, she just sets it aside and goes back to the call to thank Declan for the gift. However, the group starts getting possessed one by one while Declan hits himself over and over on his screen. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.